Ross Norman, gold prices crashed a couple of years ago. Now we see some recovery, currently at 1,300 per ounce. Where do you see the development? Well, going back to your point, I mean, gold was at an all-time high just back in September 2011. Since then, it's had to absorb a huge amount of selling. Uh, not only gold ETF redemptions, about 880 tons, but also close to 200 tons of future selling. So the gold market very much had to absorb a massive amount of selling, which it's done. And the question now is, has it now finally reached a bottom? If you take the top price at 1922, the all-time high in September 2011, and the recent low of 1180, to say that we're back to the races and we've really got a bull run again, we really need to get back to the sort of 1550 level. And we're not there, of course, we're just at 1300. Now that 1550 number is quite interesting because actually, if you think about the current oil price, at close to $100 a barrel, and the gold oil ratio is typically 16 to 1, it would suggest to me either that gold is underpriced or oil is overpriced. Certainly that should converge. In other words, gold should be trading around the $1,600 level according to the oil price, 1550 to see a bull run. So by the measure, gold is underpriced at the moment. Will we get there in the short term? It might take a little bit of time. Ross, stock markets are booming, especially here in Dubai. Yeah. Dubai financial market is one of the best yeah. uh, markets here in the world performing the last two months. Yeah. Should I still buy gold? Well, I'm not sure I'd buy equities when we're at an all-time high, S&P. The, the PE ratios don't really, to my mind, support those levels. Now, I'm not an equity expert. The point about it is really that gold is an insurance policy. It really doesn't matter what the first domino looks like if you're you know, uh, uh, an apocalyptic theory thinker. The key point is that there are certainly some issues in the global economy, whether it's the amount of monetary expansion, whether it's the fact that equities are at all-time highs, unsupported by the profits generated by the businesses. There are certainly some things out there that would give you concerns. And to that extent, gold does what it should do, which is it provides cheap insurance. And if the worst doesn't happen, you still get to keep the gold. We heard it yesterday, Ross, that 40% um, of the gold trade now flows through Dubai. Yeah. It's a big achievement. And uh, Ahmed bin Sulaim, the chairman, executive chairman of DMCC, said we can even go higher to 60%. Yeah. Do you agree? Yes, quite possibly. I mean, to make it work for a country, and Dubai's worked this out, you need to be an entrepreneur. In other words, you need to have the coming together of all things. Start with Emirates Airlines. It's got a phenomenal reach across the globe, uh, one of the world's leading airlines. With that, it's cheaper and easier to fly gold. And that's actually, strangely enough, one of the primary drivers about the flows of gold around the world is the quality in the networks of the airline. Add to that the combination of uh, ancillary businesses, the vaulting, um, the testing, the trading, and so on and you get a virtual circle of activity which drives metal through the region. It's what developed London in the first place, Hong Kong and indeed Singapore. So in a sense Dubai is only following in the footsteps of those other great trading cities by creating a hub. And indeed this conference here is another example where you get people from around the world coming to share exact ideas. Not only Dubai but also your company achieved some accolades. Could you please tell us more about yeah. London based and you are one of the top forecasters? Yes, well, I'm glad you asked me that question. Uh, Sharks Pixie basically in the business of selling retail physical gold to um, UK, the UK market. So the yellow bars delivered or vaulted for the clients. Simple as that. It's quite a new concept in England. Um, in Germany, for example, many investors buy physical gold. But in the UK, uh, uh, there, is a, there is a culture for, for buying gold, but let's say it still requires stimulating. Uh, with regard to, to gold forecasting, a uh, report was put out by the London Bullion Market only last week to come up with the league table of the top gold forecasters over the last 13 years. Yes, uh, with some modesty and humility, as I was actually the top player on that league table. A fantastic final statement, uh, reflecting British understatement. Ross, <laughs> thank you very much indeed, very and pleasure. I wish you all the best. Thank you.